In today's video, I am going to show you how you can fix your zaps when sending data from Airtable to Webflow. Let's get into it. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Connor. I'm the founder of The Unicorn Factory, a freelancer marketplace in New Zealand and in Canada. So on this channel, I make a whole bunch of videos about how to set up your own directories and marketplaces using Webflow, Airtable, and Zapier. So in today's video, I wanted to address some of the most common issues that come up when sending data from Airtable to Webflow using Zapier. Now, if you've used Zapier to send data to Webflow, you would have likely already experienced the famous validation error, validation failure error message that comes up when something goes wrong. Now, the problem with this error message is that it doesn't really tell you what exactly is going wrong, which makes it very hard to fix it, especially when you're just getting started with Zapier. So having used Zapier to send data to Webflow for the last few years, I have come across this error message quite a bit. And now I have kind of identified that there are usually four main reasons why the zaps fail. So what I wanted to do in this video is show you exactly what those four reasons are, how you can identify which one is applying to your particular project, and then also how you can fix it. But before I get into it, I'd appreciate a subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and a like on this video. The more likes I get on video, the easier it is for me to understand what kind of content you're enjoying or what's useful to you and I'll make more of those videos in the future. But without further ado, let's jump into number one. So one of the most common reasons why your Webflow Zap will fail is because you made a change to your CMS structure or collection and didn't republish your site before retesting that Zap. So what I mean by that is when you remove a field from your CMS collection or you change the structure of say for example an option field, then you must republish that before retesting your Zap. If you don't do that, Zapier won't recognize the changes that were made and it will come up with the same error message that you had beforehand. So the easiest way to see if that is the reason is just to republish the site, then jump back into Zapier and then retest and review your Zap. And if that solves the issue, then sweet, you're good to go. Otherwise, you'll have to look at one of the other following reasons. So another common reason why that error message comes up is because when you are sending a CMS item ID from say somewhere like Airtable to Webflow and that item ID no longer exists or is wrong, then that error message will show up. So this error message often comes up when you're creating a new CMS item inside of Webflow but are referencing another collection through a reference field. So an example of that could be when you, for example, create a new blog item inside of your Webflow CMS but are referencing another collection, for example, the category field. So within this particular issue, there are a few sub issues. So the first one is that the CMS ID is just plain wrong. So that can oftentimes happen when you're using a third party tool like Airtable or Google Sheets to store CMS IDs. What happens is when Zapier tries to pull that CMS ID that is incorrect in the first place, it will just not recognize that that CMS ID exists inside of Webflow and will therefore come up with that error message. So a way that you can quickly check if that CMS ID actually exists is to copy and paste it out from wherever your source is, be Airtable or Google Sheets, but you can also look it up inside of Zapier where the error message shows up and then just jump in into your Webflow CMS and see if that CMS ID matches up with what you have inside of Webflow. So if the CMS IDs do match up, sweet, then that wasn't the issue and I'll show you what the other reasons could be in just a second. But if it turns out that you did actually store the wrong CMS item ID, then what you're gonna have to do is go to your source where that CMS ID is stored and update it with the actual one that you have inside of Webflow. From there, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to jump back into Zapier and you're going to have to go back to the initial trigger state that pulls in that information and then retest that step. If you don't do that, it will try to use the old CMS ID that was stored previously and again it won't work. So you're just going to have to go through the process of setting up and retesting that zap again. So another issue with the reference item ID can be that it is no longer live. So that means you've either archived it or deleted it. Now in that case it's going to give you a special error message telling you that the item is not published and therefore it will be quite easy to spot that that is the reason. But what you'll need to do in that case is you'll need to jump back into where the source is and then either remove it or change that particular field. Alternatively if you just republish that particular item inside of the collection that you're referencing and then republish your site, everything should work out as well. 
So another common reason why things can go wrong when sending data to Webflow through Zapier is because the data that you're sending to Webflow, it has the incorrect field type. So an example of that is if you are trying to send some text to say a URL field in Webflow, or you are trying to send an image to Webflow, but you're not sending the correct file type, then what will happen is Webflow will recognize that it's not the right field type that you've selected and come up with that error message. Those particular issues are usually quite easy to spot. If you just go through the different fields and see what field type it is, it should be quite easy for you to see immediately what ones are incorrect and how you can fix it. One of the more sneaky issues that can sneak up on you though is using option fields. Now inside of option fields, you need to predefine the fields with the options that you want to give it inside of that Webflow collection. And if you are sending that data through Zapier to Webflow and it is not spelled exactly as it is inside of Webflow, then that error message will show up as well. So the thing to keep in mind here is it's case sensitive, which means that even if you just capitalize one letter inside of Webflow that you don't capitalize inside of something like Airtable, then that error message will show up. So what you're gonna to have to do in that case is just be super diligent about going through your different option fields and seeing that they line up exactly. And then the last reason, which is kind of a weird one, but it just is what it is, is that you've only published your .webflow.io domain. Now, basically from my limited technical understanding, what I think is going wrong here is that you actually have two versions of your website published on the internet, your .webflow.io version and then your version on your domain. And what happens here is Zapier doesn't exactly know what particular site to send that updated information to, which means it comes up with that particular error message. Again, the only thing that you can really do here is just publish both of your domains, so your .webflow.io domain and your original domain, so that they are both in the exact same state. That is something again that fixes these types of issues, so just go ahead and try that out. So those are the most common errors that I see when working with Zapier to send data to Webflow. Of course there can be some other reasons, I don't think I've experienced that many other reasons. So. When in doubt, just go through the process and try and fix it using those steps that I just explained to you. But if you have come across any other errors and you're not exactly sure how to do it, then send me a message through my website so I can then have a look into what that particular error message is and how you could potentially fix it. And that will also help me then in the future make an updated version of this video. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that this was useful and hopefully you can go ahead now and fix some of your zaps. I would appreciate a like in the video if you enjoyed it and I'll see you back here for the next one. Bye.